So for playing with Coach Sperrier, you know, he has this, this fun and gun thing that, that's kind of working for a couple of years, but it's really not until you get on campus that it, it continues to you know, rise to the level that it reaches. Can you just talk a little bit about how you get to that point of exploding in 95 and 96, just redshirting that first year on campus, but then the following two years, mentally just sort of understanding how to run that offense, but also platooning with another guy. How do you, you know, mentally get yourself really into it if you're not all the way in, you're splitting time with someone? And I can imagine that that would divide the team a little bit too. They might, you know, lean one way or the other versus, you know, who's their guy? Yeah, I thought those first couple of years I split time with another uh, a great quarterback named Terry Dean. I think it was probably easier for me because I was the young guy. So, you know, he was a junior when I was a freshman and he was a senior when I was a sophomore. So for me, it was more like, well, would I rather play half the game or would I rather play none of the game? And I think it was probably a much more difficult scenario for him to be in at that time. But, uh, you know, even my redshirt year watching Shane Matthews and those next few years playing some, um, just continued to grow as a quarterback and, and see more experiences and, and just get more and more comfortable with what Coach Furrier was trying to do against each defense. And then I also think just our squad came together. We, we just had some phenomenal players. And the run in 1995 and 1996 was pretty, pretty amazing to be a part of. Oh, I, I can only imagine. And the thing is, is while you guys are platooning, you're winning SEC titles. So, it, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But it, <laughs> once, uh, I'm sorry, I'm blanking on, uh, I'm sorry, Terry Dean, once he graduates, um, it, it, so 1995 comes in and you're able to be the starter. What clicked for you to be able to just, you know, take that huge step forward as, as a leader on the team, uh, obviously now that the soul started getting a lot more playing time for you to then have the, the season and then ultimately seasons that you did have. Yeah, it's hard to say all the different factors. I think it was the accumulation of, of all of us getting better. Um, you know, I certainly, certainly got better, but we, we just brought in some phenomenal young receivers that I think really helped as well. Um, and we just, just had a, a run that was pretty crazy. You know, we, Never lost in four years in the SEC. I never lost to Alabama, never lost to Georgia, never lost to LSU, never lost to Tennessee. You name them all. The only two losses we had in four years was to one team, and that was Auburn. They beat us twice. We beat them twice. So what? just an incredible, incredible run uh, in the mid-'90s. I feel like Auburn always has a way of getting under team skin and, and breaking up whatever good mojo they have. Yeah. But <laughs> – um, yeah, I just wanted to fast forward a little bit to the, the end of your 95 season where you guys go in full head of steam and there's just this unfortunate bigger powerhouse in Nebraska that comes in, in, in uh, unfortunately lays a little bit of a beaten. Can you just talk about what it's like to make it to that stage, be dealt that hand and then come back the next year with no hangover, actually coming back hungrier to go in, get back there? Yeah, well, I think it was... Like a lot of things in life, sometimes the adversity is what makes you better uh, if, you'll, if you'll kind of walk with it and learn from it. Um, and, and certainly, I think as a team, we were overconfident. You know, there was a lot of times in the past where some of the big Nebraska or Oklahoma teams came down and the, the faster, so supposed, you know, Florida teams or Miami or Florida State would, would beat them. And so I think we just, we were very confident, overconfident. Um, Actually, I think man for man, our 1995 team was a better team than the 1996 team, if you kind of look at, look at all of it. But uh, they came in and just destroyed us. Uh, they beat us well. It was very humbling. Um, but it, 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 I think, made us better. We came back the next year. I think we were a little more grounded, a little more mature. And in particular, you know, the way – the way you prepare for a bowl game is very different because you're not in school. You're not practicing at your home. It's, it's almost like a, a weird scenario where you go to some random city and you live there for a week in a hotel and get ready and kind of the mindset around that and how much of that are guys going out and how much of our focus. I think we really shifted that the following year. Um, we were, we were dialed in. And, uh, and, and so that to me, the, losing that game to Nebraska really, drove us towards where we went in 96. And for, for you to win in 96 by 
beating an FSU team aforementioned, what one of the, the teams you looked at and for you guys to have lost to them earlier that year. I, I mean, what was that? I, I mean, I just, it has to be so fulfilling to not just win, but to win in that style. Yeah. It feels a little bit looking back, like it was a, a movie that I watched. It was so ideal and perfect that you can't imagine it was, it was real. Um, you know, we were undefeated last game of the regular season, Florida state beats us. My dad counted, he said, I got knocked down 32 times in one game, several late hits, some that weren't called. Uh, so we we're pretty much out. You know, when you lose the last game of the regular season, there's very little chance for you to win the national title. So I think we dropped to number five or number six. But then the next week, uh, the number one team, Nebraska, lost to Texas. I think Alabama may have been the number two team, and we played them and we beat them. Uh, I think there was a, a, a number three team was Arizona State, who then lost to Ohio State. And then the, the next team that was up there now is Florida State. And then we played them and beat them. So uh, it was just a crazy scenario, but one that uh, we were just so grateful. Again, we had to bounce back from a bad victory. We had to kind of regather ourselves right away at the end of the year. And it was a testimony to our team, I think, and the maturity of some of the leaders that we were geared up, dialed in, and, and beat Alabama and then beat Florida State. Storybook. Uh, now, do you understand, like, while this is happening, but the Heisman, like, are, are you aware that you're going to, or, or you're in contention to get literally every major college football award while it's happening? Uh, you know, I think, I mean, obviously, yes. Um, couple things. I, for me, one, I made a decision going into my senior season not to watch any TV or read any newspapers or magazines. So a lot of the hype I was just not a part of, which I think helped me. I think Coach Spurrier also had a different perspective. You know, a lot of schools almost have a PR campaign for their Heisman candidate, and they're just pushing it and pushing it. Spurrier's philosophy was to downplay it. So we never talked about it. We didn't think about it. We just you know, ran the next play, played the next team. Um, and then, you know, as it, as it came to be, and as we go to the ceremony, it's just happening so fast. Like you really, you know, going through a football season, you're, you don't even have a chance to think about the last game because the next game, and then, you know, you beat Alabama, and, and now there's this Heisman, but you can't think about that because you're getting ready for the national championship. So it, in some ways, it was like a blur. And I remember – Coach Furrier's wife, she, she came up to me after I had won. And she goes, you know, Danny, you're not even really going to understand what this means for you right now. But over the course of your life, you will. It's going to be amazing. And, and she was right. I mean, I found that note the other day. And she, she had told me and written it in a note. And so um, it really has. I think, you know, life goes on. You move forward. You know, some people remember an SEC championship. Some don't. Some people can remember a national championship team. Some don't like everybody remembers the Heisman and it's like, it's just such an iconic thing that's attached to you forever. And uh, it's been quite a blessing.